Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today is going to be a long one, I'm afraid. It is a roundup of my makes for January. So January makes and all in all I have made 12 items. I've got 12 items to show you. Uh, one of the items to be fair was made at the beginning of December. Uh, it was a blogger project for Jenny and she's just released that on her blog um the beginning of this month february so now i'm able to reveal that and so i've just included it in my january makes um and so let's get straight into it so my first make of the month of january it isn't in order but it's what i'm wearing now it's the leela leela knee it's the nina lee south bank sweater which is let me show you the pattern first it is this one over here the Nina Lee South Bank sweater. So it just comes in a long line sweater, which is basically a dress. Sorry, so it's a dress with a bottom cuff, uh, cuffs at the wrists and like a turtleneck, but it isn't, um, it isn't, um, what's it called, fitted around the neck. It's more like a loose, almost like a funnel neck, I suppose. Then you've got a long line um, sweater and then you've got a crop sweater. The shoulders are dropped. Um, it is a loose fit. Um, and that's it really. So this goes from a size... UK size 6, bust of 32, waist of 24, all the way up to a UK size 20, bust of 46, waist of 38. I have made mine in a lovely, don't know if you can see, it's a um, jacquard knitted um, fabric from Chevron Fabric from Jenny Stitches. It's in a green colorway. They also have it in a navy, which is still in stock at the moment. Um, and I went for the dress version. I also lengthened mine a bit because I like my dresses just below the knee and everything else was the same. I ended up making a, sorry, I'm, I'm out of breath because I just, um, um, I don't know if I've got things here. I ended up making a size 14. I don't even have it on here, which is annoying. No, I don't. So I ended up making a size, let me see, was it a 14? No, sorry, I ended up making a size 16 uh, going on my bust measurements, which is a 42 waist, a 42 bust. Um, and my bust at the moment is 41. I'm 27 weeks pregnant and the waist of 34. Now that doesn't sound right because my waist is obviously bigger than 34, but I think because of the looseness of the garment, there is quite a lot of ease there. I'll show you the finished measurement. So I went for a size 16, which is a bust of 42, waist of 34. And the finished garment measurements for that, oh, here you go. The finished garment measurements for that are 43 inches on the bust, which is fine because I'm 41. So that's two inches of ease. And then at the waist, um, oh, there's quite a lot. Version one and two. Yeah. So at the waist, um, there is about six inches of ease. So for, no, uh, six inches of ease. Yeah. So that's, that's more than enough for me. Um, and yeah, very straightforward. Everything was done on the overlocker. There was actually no top stitching either. So literally everything was done on the overlocker. Um, and it's a simple front piece and back piece um, joined at the shoulders, um, sleeves laid on the flat, um, 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 sewn on the flat and then you um, uh, do the sleeve seams, the side seams, add the cuffs and add the neckline and uh, neckband. That was very very simple to do and I can show you my one here so I can stand up um, so here you can see it's the drop sleeve so normally the sleeve, the shoulder seam should sort of be up, up here but it's a dropped one and then you've got lovely deep cuffs a lovely neck as well and to be fair i did increase this by an inch and a half because um my very my very first version is a blogger project for jenny stitches again and that hasn't been released on her blog yet so i haven't released that at all on instagram or youtube but that for, i just followed the instructions for the actual neck piece and it was just quite sh too short for me i think it was kind of like this and i kind of wanted it a bit taller so i added an inch and a half and in hindsight i think i only needed to add an inch because that tends to kind of flop down and also because the fabric i suppose if you were using a this is kind of like a thick ponte roma fabric but i suppose if you were using like a fleece or a sweatshirting it would probably stand up a bit more but i still think half an inch off that would probably look a little bit better so I will have made a note on my pattern piece to just um, extend this uh, neck piece by an inch rather than an inch and a half. 
and that was that one let me pop up a photo of me wearing it they're not the most flattering photos i tried to take different angles and things and i just didn't like what i was seeing so i didn't even post it on instagram but i'll show you on here right now so that's my first make very easy make i think from start to finish i would say two hours from cutting out and everything very very simple um and the lo lovely thing about this is because it's just a straight side seams after pregnancy post pregnancy i can just take it in at the side seams with my overlocker and decrease the size so it fits me post pregnancy which is really really great um the second thing i wanted to show you was my heather blazer which is as i said before it was made in december as my blogger project for jenny it's now just been released on her blog i will link a post uh, i will put a link down below um and it's got some lovely uh, comments on instagram as well so this pattern is the heather blazer i have made this heather blazer before let me show you the one that i made before i don't know if you remember this floral number that I made so I made that as is in a size medium and I loved it so much uh, because I thought sorry <laughs> I thought for a very simple pattern it looked like a tailored jacket it was a good fit it was fairly easy to follow and I just thought let me lengthen it to a coat pattern because I've always I've made three kind of coats so far in my sewing career I've made the um, duster, Cambria duster by the Friday Pattern Company. Um, and that kind of just looks like a wrap coat, but it's not lined. So that's not really a coat, I suppose. Then I've made a bird coat, which is again another wrap coat. Um, it's lovely, but I don't wear it. Um, and then the third coat I've made is this Heather Blazer now, which I've turned into a coat. Again, it is lovely, but there are bits and pieces in the final garment that I don't particularly like. And I am still waiting to um, find a, a coat pattern that I love enough to make. And that when I make it, it, it looks like a professional coat that I would have bought rather than a handmade coat. Maybe that's just me being, um, what's the word, overly critical because I've made it and I can see the, the things that I've done wrong. Children are calling me, yes! Do you want to add some cinnamon swirls or cinnamon swirls then? Uh, can we just do the pan au chocolat? What's the pan au chocolat? The chocolate ones. Quickly, I'm, I'm doing a vlog. Thank you, and a coffee! Um, sorry about that. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, yeah, so the Heather Blazer, I thought I would just extend it. So let me show you the pattern. Sorry. Friday Pattern Company, Heather Blazer, line drawings are as such. So it's basically a boxy blazer. Um, it's got a centre back seam, it's got a collar, a lapel, two piece sleeves, patch pockets, button here, no vents, it's fully lined um, and it's a lovely, easy, straightforward pattern. So for a beginner blazer, this is very good. It's not fitted, but you could, um, if you wanted it a tiny bit fitted, you could just basically... Um, decrease um take an inch or so away at the waist and grade it down to the waist points as i've done with my second uh, version which i'm going to show you in a bit so this pattern um comes with from us uh, this pattern uh, comes up in a side i don't even know what i'm saying i can't even talk this pattern um baby brain comes in sizes extra small to 7x which is amazing extra small bust of 32 i'm sorry it's bust of 32 inches waist of 24 all the way up to a 7x which is a bust of 59 to a waist of 52 so very very generous plus because it's a boxy fit um so it's not fitted at all so there is a lot of ease in there i went for a size medium which is what i did for my previous uh, garment previous uh, um jacket or blazer and that's a bust of 36 and a waist of 28 which is not me at all i am normally a bust of about 37 38 and my waist is not 28 my waist is about 32 to 33 but the reason i went for that medium was because the finished garment measurements for that is a bust of 44 so in my pre-pregnancy size 38 4 5 6 that's six inches of ease at the bust which is great and then the waist is a waist of 43 and my waist at the time was about 33 so that's 10 inches of ease 
so it is really a boxy straight fit but what I did with this one I did take in the waist by I think three inches on each side just to have a tiny bit of a um, tiny bit of shaping at the waist um, and the only other thing I did was lengthen the the blazer um, quite simply actually I just lengthened the back pieces so literally I just lengthened it boop and the front pieces as well I lengthened it the pockets I kept at the same position and also I really wanted to add a back vent which obviously the instructions aren't in this pattern I just think a long coat it was did it hit I think it just hit above my knee a long coat from what I've seen shop bought ones they always have a vent and I just thought if I didn't have a vent it would look too homemade and I didn't want that and so I then embarked on this process of trying to find a tutorial on how to draft my own back vent and sew my own back vent and to be honest with you it was such a lot of hard work um and this is why I don't really like um hacking patterns that much because I'm not I mean I've, I've never really done any drafting any pattern drafting as such so it was all kind of just I was making it a tub as I went along and so the one of the I'll show you one of the pieces here so this is the back piece I've got here so normally it would finish around here and I've attached a part here to make it longer I think I added 14 inches for the length and this is my back um what's this called my kick what did I call it my back vent piece here and I followed I don't have the exact tutorial but there are so many on YouTube uh, um, tutorials on how to draft your own back pleat um back vent and how to sew it um, but it is very complicated for something. I mean, I guess the detail, I wouldn't say the detail is minor, but I wouldn't say it was major, major either. And it looks so easy, just like how it flaps. I'll show you my version here. Um, I'll just show you the back vent. I don't even know if you can see it. Ah, back vent. So, oops. The back <laughs> vent is here. Uh, so I don't know if you can see so that's the back vent lined uh, close it there's the line of stitching there for the back vent um, and it doesn't look too bad in the camera actually but I found it was so tricky to do I had to do it I had to unpick it so many times and I think maybe if it was just a back vent without the lining but because there was the added lining part as well just the logistics of what got sewn onto what first what angle the stitches were it was just actually really really complicated for something so so small overall pattern wise um and now that i finished it it's not too bad but i find that it does sag a little bit so let me show i don't know if i can so yeah you can see it right there that crease there that just really really bugs me so when it's hanging as i'm wearing it you can see that and I think it's because the lining isn't, um, the lining is bunched up at the back. So it's not the right sort of hanging proportion. Um, and that really, really bugs me. And that's why I don't wear it, which is really annoying. But here is the version that I made. It's in a lovely navy wool 100% wool uh dead stock x designer laura ashley from jenny fabrics beautiful to work with it's washed really well so how i pre-treat my wool is i um put it in the dryer with a saturated towel um like a bath towel i i, I saturate it but then i squeeze out the excess water i put it in the tumble dryer um, and then once that towel is dry um I'm hoping that the steam would have shrunk the wool naturally and that's one of the ways you can um, pre-shrink wool there's also other ways but that's the one that I found to be the easiest and the most sort of home friendly and that's what I did with my wool and then the lining is just some lovely cotton lawn in there I think this is called they still have it online berry something I'm not sure so that's just a cotton lawn and then the sleeves I was going to line it with cotton lawn as well because I love the print but I know from previous times that where I've lined a sleeve with cotton lawn or anything that isn't slippery um, it's just hard to get your arm in and out so I've literally just used some inexpensive um, burgundy lining um, lining fabric anti-static lining fabric 
um, and this was all from Jenny Stitches. So obviously I am one of her bloggers, so not obviously, but uh, for those of you that do follow me, you will know that I am one of her bloggers. So I get all of this fabric, uh, the pattern printout, all the haberdashery and notions uh, free of charge in return for a blog post. Um, and it is actually a beautiful coat. I mean, from the front, it looks lovely. It's, it's just the back. So if I'm walking, I'd probably... Um, walk really fast if someone was behind me or if I'm standing up I'd probably sort of just kind of shift around so nobody can really see my back and I think maybe it's just because I've made it and I've noticed it and also to be fair my mother-in-law noticed it she was like oh darling you, you do know that it's kind of puckering up at the back and I was like thanks mum I really didn't want you to say that but um apart from that everything went together beautifully it pressed really well I do use my clapper wooden clapper for all of my wool makes and basically every time you press a seam you put this on top and then you allow the seam to cool and it just allows for a lovely flat seam on the wool otherwise you get um what is it called like bumpy seams that don't look professional um it just does, it just looks a bit homemade anyway one of those very good um photos of me wearing it um so yeah also i'll show you the pockets as well it's just patch pockets there so photos of me wearing it are popping up now. Uh, and yeah, instructions are very, very good. Um, there are a lot of pieces because you have, I mean, there are a lot of pieces plus the lining as well. But I think if you just pin all your paper pieces to your pattern pieces, then um, you should be fine. Oh, one issue I did have is somehow I must have cut two of the same sleeves rather than opposite mirrored images of the sleeves I've I cut out two left sleeves and then when I put them together they just it just didn't look right and I was going to leave it until um I thought you know what it's a really nice coat the fabric is gorgeous let's just unpick it and do it and it wasn't so bad I, I procrastinated for a while because I had to undo the um so I had to go through the back seam I had to go through the center back seam undo that and then go in from the inside undo the lining undo the sleeve and I didn't actually cut it out I just reversed it I just flipped it over so it's kind of like a mirrored image and luckily the wall both sides of the wall kind of look like the front side or the best side or the right side so that was quite handy and then I reattached that so it's a much nicer fit as well um, instruction wise as I say very simple very straightforward the only thing that um, was a bit tricky was attaching the lining and on the actual instructions it does actually say if you read the instructions by itself it does sound incredibly complicated but they do have a video tutorial which they've got a link for on the um on the pattern and that shows you step by step exactly how to um attach the lining to the main and hem it and it's actually really simple once you've been shown how to do it so that was fine and so the only major problem was obviously the back vent which i said before um, i probably attempted three or four times to try and get it to lay flat for the lining to all bunch up and it was just it was just really really difficult i don't even know if i can show you why why it was so difficult um it was difficult so my next plan for a coat probably won't be anytime soon because obviously it's spring summer now plus I'm having a baby in May so I probably won't have time to do that but my next coat if I do you know plan a next coat it will be kind of the same style because I like that style of coat I like kind of like uh the blazer style so with a with a collar and a lapel I like the two-piece sleeve and I like the wrap as well but I would like buttons but I definitely want a back vent um so a pattern with back vent instructions and the ones that I've come across are the hot toddy by lady of leisure I can pop up a photo so this is really nice it's got a back vent it's exactly the same almost as the heather blazer actually but it doesn't have a lining and there is no extension pack for a lining so again you know to draft my own lining can i be bothered can i you know not really and then the other one is the vivienne coat by uh, so over it in their latest i think it's called their vintage ebook they've got a lovely um very similar style actually but it's a bit more fitted at the waist it's got the tie belt um i don't know if it's got uh welt pockets i'm not quite sure but it has the back vent and it's obviously as a vintage pattern it's a bit more ladylike a bit more fem feminine so i think i'll give that a go 
also the cashmere um they have a raincoat i'm not sure what it's called not a raincoat um what do they call it a mac and that's got a back vent but then also it has all like the back vents and all sorts of the epaulets i think they're called epaulets the shoulder things here so that's another pattern to go for as well and that's fully lined so both the vivienne and the cashmere coat or mac are both lined so i might i probably will go for one of those at some point in the future so that's my heather blazer um that's that one so that's two down let me just if i put this away at the same time sorry then i won't be so scattered no that's that one. i need to just oh here it is and then the next thing i wanted to show you was um two makes that i made as a present for my goddaughter i have mentioned this dress many times before it is my go-to girls dress for girls it's the ellie and mac kids be curious pattern it goes up from 12 months to big kid 12. Again, it's just a line bodice, sleeves. You can make them short sleeves. You can also have flutter sleeves, elasticated cuff. Uh, you have tiered skirts. Again, these tiers you can play around with. Um, and it's a button back. Uh, very easy to make up. Uh, lots of different variations. I think I've made, gosh, probably about 12 of these by now. But I will show you two of the versions that I made for my goddaughter, Noelle. Which I don't have to hand anymore because I've, I've posted it off to her already. So I'll just pop up some photos of that one. Then I also made, so that was that. So that's two of the Be Curious dresses, the Heather coat and the South Bank, which I'm wearing. So that's four so far. Uh, and then the next thing that I made is the Leona by Fiber Mood. This one right here, it's a knit sweater. This was a um, part of my Little Miss So-and-So So Luxurious subscription kit. So I made this in a um, soft sh um, sweatshirting fabric, like a teal with glitter in it. And um, so that was, I think I made that in like November or December. But I had some leftover fabric from a blogger project. And um, I had to play Tetris with the, with the pattern pieces on this leftover fabric. And I managed to make myself another one of these. So all it is, it's kind of reminds me of like an 80s style. So it's a very, again, loose fitted sweater. It has these very, so the back piece and the front piece kind of look like this. T, t piece here then you've got the big almost grown on sleeves with um gathers at this part here gathers at the back you've just got cuffs uh, a neck band and a um hem band at the bottom it is very oversized i don't know if um fiber mood fabric um, patterns are always oversized but from what i've had so far they're pretty much oversized <laughs> all the time but it does say if you don't want the oversized fit then just go down a couple of sizes so this goes from a size extra small to a triple XL, it's centimetres I'm afraid. So um, bust of 76, that's all they've given you, up to a bust of 146 centimetres. So I had to mix and match three different sizes for this. For the length, I went for a large and for the bust and the hem, I actually, I actually went for the extra small so that's how oversized this pattern is bearing in mind i have a bump as well and that fitted perfectly this time round, i lengthened the sleeves by about the same um length as the cuff because my last version was a bit too short and i also lengthened the bodice by a couple of inches just to um accommodate my bump and it's very very comfy and um, very easy to make again everything on my overlocker and it doesn't even tell you to top stitch the neckband which is great i mean you can if you want to but you don't have to very easy to make um and i'll show you my version here Ta -da! so this is the bat wing kind of thing i'm talking about if i go a bit closer so that's kind of like the the t part there and then you've got the gathers here lovely cuff at the end cuffing at the bottom or ribbing at the bottom the back is exactly the same like a mirror image and then you've just got a neck band here and i've got a little label that says so all the things this is a lovely um fleece backed alpine sweatshirting from jenny stitches fabric and matching ribbing from them as well and i'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it this is from 
and that's that one next up is what did i make next oh baby patterns okay so that's the heather blazer so i'm just tidying up as i go along ah. the next thing that i made was a couple of um items for my um baby which is my baby i'm expecting a baby boy i have four boys and four girls so the boys win the boy, <laughs> this is a tiebreaker baby baby boy he is due on the 16th of may and i have made him just two little outfits uh, these were supposed to be naught to three months but i have measured them up up against uh, ready to wear clothing which i do actually highly recommend i i have measured it up and um against ready to wear clothing and they they're actually quite big so i'm thinking for these particular patterns it's brindle and twig let me just show you it's sorry it's photocopied bad but it's brindle and twig they're on etsy and they also have their own website and it's their what do they call this crew sweatshirt it's very simple crew sweatshirt sizes not to three to five to six years old um and yeah so i did the naught to three but i put it up against a ready to wear item and it was quite big so this will have to be three to six so i have made a note on all my brindle and twig patterns that they are one size bigger so the naught to three is three to six three to six is six to, is six to nine and so on um so i made the brindle and twig sweatshirt sweater and um to to coordinate that set i made the made by jack's mom who is now waves and wild harem pants over here and i'll show you my versions here little sweater um and this is made up in a dusky vintage blue what is this waffle uh, knit jersey from uh from jelly fabrics and then some matching ribbing from jelly fabrics and these little labels at the bottom it says i stink and love you little onions this is from the kindly in the machines advent calendar so i've made one little top um and then i made matching harem trousers or harem pants <laughs> so i've used the same ribbing and then i've used some um lovely french terry print again from jelly fabrics it's like an atlas there so together i think they look very cute let me just hold that up if i can look very cute and i'll pop up a picture of it uh the next set i made very similar just different fabric this one right here so it's the gray waffle knit gray ribbing again the same i stink and love you label and the pair of harem pants lovely kind of nautical theme there with the gray ribbing all from jelly fabrics and um, very easy to make the harem pants and um, the waves and wild harem pants literally took me like 10 minutes um all it is is a front piece a back piece waistband and two cuffs and then this sweatshirt probably took me about 15 minutes so very easy to make very cute very good for baby shower gifts newborn gifts that sort of thing um and so i'm loving those at the moment the brindle and twig pattern as i say is called the crew sweatshirt number 32 they've got some lovely patterns on there at uh, waves and wild again lots of lovely children's patterns and actually both of these companies do some free patterns on their website which is really great um and i will be joining in so frugal again this month this next month in march and i'm doing it on children's clothing and i will be showcasing some items from both of these websites that are free which are really really great so that's that one i'll pop a photo i'll pop up a photo of the other set and then the next thing i made was two more daddy melian sweatshirts and i'll show you the pattern here it's a german um pattern company and the reason why i went for a german pattern company is because for the life of me i cannot find an english pattern that has i doesn't even have the proper pictures that has chevrons yep that has the chevron design so you know just this chevron on the front and the back and also on the sleeves i can't find an english pattern that has that so i've got this now and the only annoying thing about this is it does have an a0 printout not an a0 yep yeah, an a0 printout file that you can send off to a copy shop but i have i had done that in the past with jenny stitches and she said it wasn't the right um it wasn't the right dimensions for uk copy shop printers um, and mainly because maybe it's german they have their own different sizing mach not size machines so i always have to um if i'm making a different size from what i've previously made i have to print it out in a4 stick them together and cut them out which is i guess i mean 
that's just a point that I'd like to make. Also, I, I mean, if you know how to sew a sweatshirt, it is very, fairly straightforward. Uh, but the sleeves um, do need to have seam allowance added to them. Um, and so it was a good thing that I did do some. Um, so on Google, when I had the PDF um, file out on, on my laptop, I cut and paste some of the bits to Google Translate to get the English translation. And I realized there was seam allowance that needed to be added to the to the sleeves and to the bodice apart from that everything else is straightforward um and i'll show you my versions here so i made one for my son which is this one here so it's the chevron at the front i don't know if you can see the chevron from the side the chevrons at the sleeve there you go and this is some lovely i'll show you the fabric it's some lovely sweatshirting from really lovely fleece back sweatshirting really good thick quality from pound fabrics mustard rust and navy these ties i got from um etsy somewhere um and yes i really really like it it's a fairly easy pattern to use and by the way when i said you needed to add seam allowances to these pieces here what they've done is instead of um having a um a pattern piece for this section here a pattern piece for this section this section and so on they've given you a whole body pattern and then you're supposed to just cut it out piece by piece and then add seam allowance rather than giving you all different pattern pieces i don't know if that makes sense um, but i guess it's a quite a good way of saving on um pattern pieces um like if you're doing an a0 if all the pieces were separate they would probably need two sheets at the moment it's only one sheet and that's that so the only thing i wasn't keen on in this pattern is the um these things what are these called um grommets i have always found that where i've used grommets on knit fabric eventually it comes away uh the fabric comes away and there's like a gap between the grommet and the fabric and what i have done in the past is i have put a patch of this is just um leftover twill fabric not twill fabric tweed fabric i have also used leather um cut off leather bits which i think is much better although the leather bits that i had was left over from a bag kit i don't actually buy leather fabric at all and so i had run out of that so i had to use this so that's the only my only concern with grommets even when i used to do the tilly and the buttons where i have done tilly and the buttons to have the t-shirt dresses for the drawstring they do say either use grommets or um buttonholes and where i've used grommets in in after lots of use the grommets have kind of pulled away so i've just used buttonholes so this is for my son and i'll pop up a photo of him wearing it i think i did a medium for him and then i made and also made another one for my husband and i'll pop up a photo of him wearing that and both of them together so here's one all fabric again from um, pound fabrics so dark gray burgundy and a black and then his hood is lined in the burgundy and what i've done with his one is he's worn this so many times already i've just used buttonholes actually and it's not too bad and at least i know that it won't come away but my husband this is actually the first thing i've ever made my husband in all the years of my sewing i think i've been sewing now for five six years maybe more and this is the first thing i made for him and he was so super super happy he works from home so he works remotely he's a software engineer and he was just so <laughs> excited because he was like obviously when you work from home you were in front of a pc and you can only sort of see the top half of people so he was like oh yeah i've got something new to, to to wear on my screen you know when i'm working people can see the top half of my screen and so he was very very excited um <laughs> that i made him one so i have gone and bought some more sweatshirting fabric from little miss so and so they had a deal on their sweatshirting also for, for those of you that don't know they do have a point system every time you buy something you collect points and in the end 100 points equals one pound and i didn't even realize that i already had more than a thousand points on my um on my account and so that was 10 pounds off so i bought i think four or five different colored sweatshirtings one meter of each one meter of each and i'm going to mix and match colors for my son and my husband i think i bought like a teal like a vintage blue a camel color sort of blues and grays and greens and i'm going to kind of mix and match those colors to make uh, different combinations one more for my son and another one for my husband um so that um inst instructions for that again fairly straightforward but you must make sure to add your seam allowances so that's the only point with that um 
Next up is, what else have I got here? Okay, I made another blogger post for Jenny. Um, so the one that I've, the, my first version is the blogger post. So I can't post that up yet. And that's getting released next month, I believe. And I decided to make a maternity nursing dress, which I've never made before. And for those of you that um, have been pregnant recently or nursing, probably in the past five or ten years, you'll know that nursing um, nursing dresses are extremely expensive. And I'm guessing the the styles and the fabric, you know, is isn't there's not that huge, um, there's not that many variations. And so I thought, let me give it a go. Let me try and make my own. And I came across a pattern, Peekaboo Pattern Shop, and I went for the Cheyenne tiered dress so peekaboo is the brand this is the uh, dress it goes in a size xx small to 5x and it's basically um what's the tier it's got tiered skirts uh so it's got three tiers here two tiers here i guess you could do one tier if you wanted to so you can play around with the tiers you've got the normal bodice with the balloon sleeves and the cuff you can turn it into a sleeveless bodice short sleeve bodice this is a long sleeve but like a straight sleeve rather than the balloon sleeve and so you can turn it into a dress or a top and the main part that i wanted is this uh brett nursing access so all it is is kind of like two pieces crossed over so it's like a v-neck crossover bodice underneath the main bodice so it's very simple and that layer just lifts up and then you have a nursing access there which is really really great um let me show you very very easy to do say very very easy very simple there's no nothing difficult in the instructions so size wise extra extra small bust of 30 waist of 23 which is tiny um <laughs> all the way up to a 5xs xx which is a bust of 55 to and a waist of 47 I went for the 1X, which is a bust of 41 and a waist of 35 um, to accommodate my bust and my bump. Um, and yeah, it was fairly straightforward. So the only thing that's slightly different about this dress is, I'll show you actually. So I'll show you my, this one here. This is my, uh, one, ver one of my versions. It's just made in a lovely viscose jersey. Um, I bought this from the market. It was part of my stash. I bought this in the market in London years ago. Um, so you've got the long sleeves here with the cuff. And then here you have this panel that goes up. And then you can see the V-neck under there. I've got the three tiers as well. And a neckband. And um, the difference about this pattern is normally from all the other um, dress patterns that I have had or used, you normally make the bodice first attach the sleeves then you make the skirt and then you attach the skirt and the bodice together this one did it differently you um, assemble all the front pieces all the back pieces attach the sleeves and then um do the side seams all in one go so you do the v-neck piece first then you put that one on top then you'd add the first layer of the front skirt second layer front skirt third layer front skirt then you do the back bodice um, the layers of the back skirt then you would attach the two at the shoulders attach the sleeves on the flat and then you would sew all in one go from the cuff all the way down this sleeve here all the way to the armpit all the way down to the waist all the way down to the bottom of the skirt all in one all in one go which is a different way of doing things but actually for me it's worked out quite well because what I plan to do is post-pregnancy is going to be a little bit big on me once I lose the baby weight and the baby bump of course and then it's just very easy for me to use my overlocker and basically just take it in by a couple of sizes all the way down so it works out really really well for me and um, there are pockets as well if you want them but I find that pockets on jersey garments they tend to gape open it just doesn't look very good so I just omitted those and also if I'm surging it anyway when I am um, after the baby I'd have to the pockets would be kind of um, a bit of a problem, which I'd have to take out the pockets and reinsert them, which I don't really want to be doing. That's my version there. I'll pop, pop up a photo. And then my other version, again, fabric from my stash from the market, is this version here. Again, breastfeeding access. And I'll pop up a photo as well. 
and that's that um the last thing i wanted to show you which hopefully is garment 12 i haven't counted it all together garment number 12 is my blogger project for little miss so-and-so they're all set to so so luxurious kit i chose the ada or ida dress um from so over it and it's this pattern here uh it is a woven dress pattern um lined bodice you have a choice of like a straight um sleeve just hemmed or you've got sort of like a billowy sleeve with shearing at the at the cuff um there's a center back seam with a invisible zip it's got starts at the back um, and gathering here at the front. So this gathering under the bust is very simple, but actually is quite effective in creating a beautiful shaping around the bust line. Uh, the waist is actually here, if you can see. So under the bust, it cuts off there and then you've got a panelled skirt and then, but it goes in a little bit to give you a bit of shaping. Um, I made this in my pre-pregnancy size. So it's something for me to look forward to post-pregnancy. Um, everything was very simple to do apart from oh the reason why i know uh, this um because i haven't tried on the dress because it won't fit me at the moment but the reason why i know this is very effective these um pleats at the bust is because my daughter has quite a few dresses from next which is exactly this um yes Sienna? if you want have you done the thing chocolate no, only oh they do okay don't worry this way go on then yeah yeah um and she has a couple of these dresses in her wardrobe and they're exactly the same style actually and um so that's how i know um sort of how flattering that that those those lines are so this particular dress goes from a size 6 to a size 30 uk size 6 to 30 and it comes in two size bands 6 to 20 and then i'm assuming 20 to 30 or maybe 16 to 30 so this particular size band um starts with a Size 6, bust of 31, waist of 24, all the way up to a size 20, bust of 45, waist of 38. So I went for the long version. I went for the um, more billowy sleeves, but I didn't want the sheared elastic. I just um, made a um, elastic channel at the wrist and added some sort of elasticated cuff, basically, similar to the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra. And I went for my standard size 12, which is what I normally am pre-pregnancy um, in so over it patterns, which is bust of 37, waist of 30. Oh, that sounds a bit small, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the only difficulty I had, let me show you my version here, actually. So I've made it in a beautiful viscose twill atelier brunette. Um, and here are the elasticated cuffs here. Lovely. I love this um, sort of um gathering of the sleeve head i think it's just so elegant um and here are the gathers at the oh can you see that here are the gathers at the bust here this is the seam line um and then invisible zip at the back now the invisible zip gave me a lot of problems as you can see it's puckering a little bit it is invisible like i'll show you like literally it's invisible um but i found it difficult because the fabric was is it, it wasn't i guess it is slippery it's quite fine fabric not as fine as cotton lawn or anything but it's just like if i was doing it maybe in a linen or a denim or a chambray it would be much easier to insert an invisible zip i did actually put um interfacing strips on either side as recommended by the pattern but it still was very hard for me to get rid of the puckers and i think the reason for that is um the reason for that is um, when I use the invisible zip, I didn't, as is recommended by most people, I did, I've got an invisible zip right here. I didn't iron it out. So normally what they ask you to do, um, this bit here, so you've got the teeth and the tape, they normally ask you to put your eye in here and iron it out and kind of move the teeth out a little bit this way. So you can see that the, the fold in between and I didn't do it this time and I think that caused me some problems because I couldn't get close enough to the teeth to the to the teeth and now and again my needle was actually going in the teeth so then I had to unpack um, unpick that and do it again and it was just a bit of a faff really but next time I do insert an invisible zip I'm going to make sure to iron them out apart from that very easy straightforward instructions I'll pop up some pictures as I'm talking the only thing that was different about this one, which I've never come across before, are fish eye. Somebody said on my vlog, it's called on my um, 
YouTube, somebody commented saying they're called fisheye, fisheye darts. So here, fisheye darts, which um, is quite fiddly because obviously with darts, that's the shape there, but then you fold it in half to create the dart. And to keep that shaping was quite fiddly because there's barely any fabric on these two points anyhow. But that was the only thing. Everything else is very easy to do. It is, um, it has facings at the neckline. And yeah, very lovely dress. I can't wait to wear it at some point. I didn't have to do any adjustments, even for the length. Normally I lengthen things, but the length was fine for me and that was that so hopefully you've enjoyed seeing all of that that should be 12 items all together i have already started doing some makes for february which i will show you hoping to do a friday sews a vlog at some point if not this week but next week thank you so much for everybody that's been watching for all of you that have subscribed as well um any questions please do comment below and in the meantime thank you for watching and i will see you next time take care bye bye god bless